Let's go a little bit into uh, the theory. How WebRTC is different from HLS. I'm pretty sure there's more people knowledgeable about HLS in the room than there is about WebRTC, so I'm going to start there. If you look at a one-way uh, media streaming pipeline, um, again, we go back to there. You have a media capture that touch the hardware, then you have the media engine. Sender side, you have an encoder. Receiving side, you have a decoder, but basically it's the same stack. You can optimize a lot of things if you're not live. If you have pre-recorded content, then basically all the encoding part, all the sending part, uh, can actually be done with an infinite amount of time, almost. You know, that Batman movie from 99 has been around for a lot of time. You can make, you know, four pass, 20 pass encoding. Netflix is doing a lot of very smart things there to actually optimize the encoding. So the resulting file in the middle that's going to be stored is going to be the smallest possible. Um, you can upload everything. On the download, you can also do a little bit on the transport. So people here, when they hear about TC, they think right away about Pier 5 or Streamroot, which are two companies that use the P2P part, not the media part of WebRTC, to actually optimize the distribution. So instead of going from the CDN server to the player, each of the player, each of the viewer that are looking at the same movie at the same time will be able to share some of the chunk together. Right? So you have some of the chunk coming to you from the CDN and some of the chunk coming through P2P connection to other people watching at the same movie. But you still need after to take, you know, take care of the DRM, uh, put the chunk back together, place them and display them. And here, uh, the resilience of the transport and all those steps to different network condition or variation is based on buffering technique. Right? So HLS is a file-based, HTTP-based, uh, technology where BTC is a, is a direct streaming.